السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وی ہیو گیدرڈ ہیئر ٹو ڈے ٹو لانچ دا ڈیبیو کلیکشن آف انگلش ورسٹ انگلش پوئمس بائی آر اون ذکیہ رباب خواجہ ہو از کرنٹلی بیسڈ ان دا یو ایس دا بک از آلسو پبلشڈ ان دا یو ایس بٹ آئی شوڈ ٹیل یو ایٹ دی آؤٹ سیٹ دیٹ دا بک از آلسو اویلیبل ہیئر آن اے ڈسکاؤنٹیڈ پرائز اینڈ وٹ آئی ہیو سیڈ اباؤٹ دا بک از آلسو لیٹ می برائگ ابٹ اباؤٹ یو نو آئی ہیو یو نو ہیو ریٹن این انڈورسمنٹ آن دس ورک وچ آئی ایم ویری تھینکفل ٹو ذکیہ فور آئی یوزلی کال ہر رباب سو آئی ول کیپ سوئچنگ بٹوین ذکیہ اینڈ رباب اینڈ وی گو بیک ٹوینٹی ایئرس شی از دا کلوزسٹ فرینڈ آف مائی برادر خیام مشیر and uh, she happens to be with Khayam since grade oh, one, since kindergarten, kindergarten, since kindergarten. That's how I know her. And I also know her not just as a poet, but also uh, somebody who has uh, a compassionate heart. She writes with a lot of sympathy and compassion, empathy rather, and she navigates between three civilizations, uh, three civilizations and three generations. One civilization is the, uh, the Vedic, South Asian civilization. The other is the Arabo-Persian civilization. And the third is the Western civilization where she now lives. Mm -hmm. And I also have to thank uh, Black Hole uh, for organizing this event. Uh, thank you, Varda, and all your team. Nayar, I can't see today. He's perhaps not here today. Uh, but they have always been very supportive for, you know, to all of us, the writing and the literary community in Islamabad and academics in Islamabad for launching uh, books and for providing this space. And Zakia, I tell you that uh, you are in uh, the best company and at the best venue, uh, because the faces I see in the audience, uh, to launch this collection. Yeah. And congratulations. Thank um, you. And uh, congratulations for coming out with this, this work. Mm -hmm. And this is something really... Um, I should stop now and so that we can have... We have started late and we have to you know, finish on time. So um, I would like you to ask, pose my, my first question, which is a little provocative um, and which is a standard question that people ask you in Pakistan. So before somebody from the audience uh, puts that question to you, let me ask you that you, when you just came and uh, you um, apologized for, for, you know, for being delayed and, you know, due to traffic or construction or anything, you spoke chaste Urdu. Why don't you write in Urdu also? I'm not suggesting that you don't write in English. Yeah. I'm saying why don't you, why did you choose to write in English? I think I feel that Urdu shairi ke liye jo aapko zaban pe ubur chahiye hota hai. Mujhe lagta hai ke mera wo ubur angrezi par zada hai. I feel uh, I actually I switch between both languages very easily and even in the collection. جن لوگوں نے پڑھی ہوگی میں اردو کے الفاظ جو ہے انگریزی شاعری میں بہت زیادہ استعمال کرتی ہوں بہت لبرلی استعمال کرتی ہوں کہا جاتا ہے فار رائٹرز جو نیٹو اگر یو وانٹ ٹو یوز دیٹ لوڈڈ ورڈ نیٹو انگلش اسپیکرز نہیں ہوتے کہ ویر ایور پاسبل آپ کو چاہیے کہ آپ انگریزی کا لفظ استعمال کریں ایون جب آپ کلچرل پوئٹری لکھ رہے ہیں بٹ آئی ڈونٹ سی وائی جہاں اردو کا لفظ اس کا وزن اس کی ایک ردم اور اس کی ایک خوبصورتی ہے تو اگر میرے میرے مصرے میں وہ بہتر بیٹھ رہا ہے تو وائی شوڈ آئی یوز اے ٹرانسلیشن آئی ڈو ناٹ فائنڈ اردو مائی ایکسپریشن ان اردو ٹو بی انکمپیٹیبل ود مائی ایکسپریشن ان انگلش یہ میرے ذہن میں بائنری نہیں ہے کہ یہ انگریزی ویسٹرن میری سینسبلٹی ہے اور یہ میری ایسٹرن اردو پرشین عربک سینسبلٹی ہے میرے ذہن میں یہ میشٹ ہے تو اس لیے اور میری رائٹنگ جو ہے وہ اس سینسبلٹی کی ایک ایکسٹینشن ہے تو اس لیے جو ہے اردو لیکن آپ کا جو ٹو یور پوائنٹ I uh, feel that Urdu uh, shairi has a depth and a range that I probably may not be able to do as much justice to as I think I am able to do it in English. Right. Um, 
तो कभी कभी ये लगता है बिकॉज सिंस यू हैव टर्न इट इनटू अ बाइलिंगुअल कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड द बुक इज इन इंग्लिश बट यू नो द ऑडियंस इज ऑल पाकिस्तानी सो वी कैन हैव अ बाइलिंगुअल कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड देन वी कैन टेक क्वेश्चंस एंड कमेंट्स आल्सो इन इन बोथ लैंग्वेजेस ये लगता है आपको कि uh, कोई एक बैगेज है uh, जाफरी साहब बैठे हैं आई वुड लाइक हिम टू स्पीक अबाउट दिस दिस आइडिया लेटर व्हेन वी ओपन द फ्लोर के ये आपको लगता है कि जब हम प, जब पाकिस्तानी या हिंदुस्तानी या यू नो साउथ एशियन नॉन नेटिव स्पीकर्स एज इट वर जब ये लिखते हैं अंग्रेजी में तो इनको वो बैगेज इन पर नहीं होता आ, मीर और गालिब का और इकबाल का और अंग्रेजी में आप ज़्यादा बग़ैर उस बैगेज के लिखते हैं क्योंकि शायद हमारी सेंसिबिलिटी में जो अंग्रेज़ी के बड़े शुरा हैं वो उस तरह से मौजूद नहीं हैं जिस तरह से हमारे अपने शुरा हैं आई थिंक अंग्रेज़ी में आपको एक हाँ वो एक जो होता है बैगेज के जो है यू आर वॉकिंग इन द स्टेप्स ऑफ आप उर्दू में अगर लिख रहे हैं तो यू आर वॉकिंग इन द स्टेप्स ऑफ गालिब यू आर वॉकिंग इन द स्टेप्स ऑफ यू नो सौदा एंड मीर एंड जॉक तो इंग्लिश में लिखने में आपको है ये एक लिबर्टी एक फ्रीडम बट एट द सेम टाइम यू हैव दैट सेंस दैट you you are still carrying because you are not a native i i keep using the word native even though i dislike this word even though you're a multilingual author ye zyada it's inclusive term hoti hai multilingual native non native is a very loaded political usme connotations aa jati hain to usme ek ye hota hai aapko ke aapke paas ab your over jise aap kahe aapke paas access hai कि आप वो ट्रेडिशंस को भी कभी इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं जो हैं आपकी ट्रेडिशनल पोइट्री उर्दू पोइट्री के ट्रोप्स जो हैं और आप जो है यू हैव ऑल द फ्रीडम टू हैव एक्सेस टू ट्रोप्स और नॉट इवन ट्रोप्स बट टू बी एक्सपेरिमेंटल इन इंग्लिश सो इट्स इट्स अ वे दैट यू कैन मेल्ट बोथ सो आई थिंक इंग्लिश के साथ मुझे पर्सनली मेरा जो एक्सपीरियंस रहा है वो ये है कि मैं आई कैन ड्रॉ ऑन ऑल दोज कल्चरल ट्रेडिशनल सेंसिबिलिटीज़ बट आई कैन आई कैन एक्सपेरिमेंट विद लैंग्वेज विद दो सेंसिबिलिटीज अच्छा एंड यू ऑसिलेट बिटवीन द प्रेजेंट एंड द पास्ट एंड समटाइम्स इन द सेम पोएम वी वी सी दैट दादियों नानियों की बड़ी अहमियत है आपकी शायरी में हाँ नहीं मतलब सीरियसली आई मीन इट्स लॉट ऑफ ट्रेडिशन दैट कम्स टू यू थ्रू योर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स एंड और उसका बहुत सेलिब्रेशन है सो हाउ यू नो हाउ डज दैट वर्क सो आई कम फ्राम अ ट्रेडिशन अ स्ट्रॉन्ग ट्रेडिशन ऑफ ओरल स्टोरी टेलिंग जैसे हम सभी हमारी कल्चर में है स्ट्रॉन्ग ट्रेडिशन ऑफ ओरल स्टोरी टेलिंग के वीव लर्न स्टोरीज एट द नीज ऑफ आर नानीज एंड दादीज एंड वी हैव ऑल क़स्से कहानियाँ और लोरियाँ हमने सब कुछ अपनी जो है नानी दादियों दादा यू नो नाना के नीज से पे हमने सीखा है एंड because i think i come from that very strong oral storytelling tradition it automatically infuses and informs my writing and i i do pay homage to that a lot of the poems i write are straddle the divide between being narrative poems and lyrical poems yeah. narrative or lyrical mein ye hai ke phir wo jo narration ka element aata hai वो उन नाना दादी नाना नानी की जो है किस्से कहानियों का एलिमेंट है दैट्स अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन माय राइटिंग एज वेल सो आई थिंक दैट्स व्हाट इनफॉर्म्स एंड इन्फ्यूजेस माय राइटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ द स्टोरीज दैट मीन सो मच टू मी हैव कम टू मी फ्रॉम माय फैमिली हैव कम टू मी फ्रॉम माय ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स एंड दैट इज सो टिपिकल टू आ कल्चरल अपब्रिंगिंग दैट इट ऑटोमेटिकली आई थिंक शाइंस थ्रू in um in my work in my verse when did you start writing because you were born in pindi grew up in islamabad and now it's been like how many years 20 15 years i have been abroad for Ab- now about 16 years 16, yes. years 16 years so when did you start writing and uh, you know what was the, so the you know what was the sort of motivation or inspiration so news in- interestingly 
my first poem was written at the age of six when my brother was born. That was the inspiring incident. And apparently, I wrote my first poem on my brother's birth and I would read it out to him three times a day, something for which he has still not forgiven me. Uh, and uh, at that point, I think I got a lot of encouragement from my parents and uh, from my family. And uh, I mean, you start really small. I mean, if I want to say, okay, I start, so, but then uh, through school, through friends, uh, my parents, I think, were a huge influence in, uh, in uh, I think, the foundation for any writer is, first of all, being a voracious reader. I personally feel that you cannot come to writing with any depth, with any um, understanding, unless you are coming from uh, reading a lot. And uh, I was always encouraged to read. And uh, in this, my parents played a very huge role. There's a joke in my family that other girls got dolls and teacups and doll houses, but I was given, my father bought me sets of encyclopedias and National Geographic subscriptions. So there was this culture of reading. There was this culture of uh, exchange of ideas, of uh, you know, appreciating the play on words. Uh, and I think that environment then created uh, a very fertile ground for me to take up the pen. And what else do you read? I mean, of course you read and write poetry, but what else do you like reading? And what have you been reading recently? And because, you know, there are very, uh, you know, many... Uh, younger people in the crowd also, so but I am. So I do tend to read a lot of poetry, uh, a lot of Urdu and English poetry, but other than that, recently uh, I have been wanting to read everything by a Japanese author, Haruki Murakami. Unka kaam mujhe bohat pasand hai. And I, my current quest is to read all his works. And I'm kind of halfway between the list because he's such a prolific writer. He keeps putting out new books and I keep, you know, adding them to my list. But I, uh, so Haruki Murakami, I read a lot of also uh, poetic criticism. So recently there was a, a really excellent book by Ben Lerner, Unone Likai, The Hatred of Poetry. And it is a brilliant essay for any friend here that loves poetry. I would uh, really recommend reading that. So a lot of poetic ben criticism, Ben Lerner. Bohat unki umda kitab hai, The Hatred of Poetry. Aur unho ne uske andar resistance of poetry se uh, developed kiye, The Defense of Poetry. So the title is misleading actually. Wo actually Hatred of Poetry se hi unho ne poetry ki defense build kiye. A brilliant book. So I, different, I, I read a lot of fiction. Um, it's a mix, I, I read a lot. <laughs> Uh, of uh, Western poets like Sharon Olds, I like a lot, Charles Simic, I like a lot, and uh, right. whatever I can lay my hands on. Faisal Buzar is sitting here, fiction reader, so in the age of fiction, mein, because we live in the age of fiction, hmm. I mean, you know, in the, the literary landscape everywhere, hmm. I mean, it's dominated by hmm. uh, novel, by fiction. Yes. So, do you have any chance to novel likhe hain kyunki pakistan mein to jo humne anglophone writing pe main aata hu aakhri sawal uske baad fir kuch nazme sunenge aapse ke us pe main baad mein aata hu lekin aapko koi kabhi ye nahi hua temptation to write fiction nahi bahut temptation hua aur hai aur i sometimes think ke jo hai main ho sakta hai ke novel bhi kabhi likhu lekin abhi filhal i think uh, poetry has more of a hold on me i have I bear a lot of untold stories. <laughs> so I have a lot of stories to tell. And hopefully one of them uh, can uh, be in the form of a novel. But at this time, I think that where I am in my writing, in my poetic sensibilities, uh, so poetry is the best vehicle for my stories. But at some point in time, I feel there may be a time when a novel might be the best vehicle to tell my stories. Right. So, rule out नहीं कर सकते. नहीं rule out. अच्छा. क्योंकि ये मुश्किल choice है ना. I mean, if you you have a command, ज़बान पे आपको अबूर है, 
जानती हैं दौर नावल का है टेम्पटेशन होती है यंग लोगों में पाकिस्तान की तो दैट लीड्स यू नो टेक्स मी टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट मैं इसमें थोड़ा सा ये भी कहूँगी कि आई थिंक आल्सो रिप्रेजेंटेशन मैटर्स और जब हम लिखते हैं मतलब दे आर मैनी नॉवल्स आउट देयर अबाउट द पाकिस्तानी अमेरिकन एक्सपीरियंस अबाउट द साउथ एशियन डायस्पोरिक एक्सपीरियंस देर इज नॉट एज मच पोइट्री and uh i think also it becomes a way of adding to the body of work in a genre and uh while there are brilliant uh, writers who straddle the divide between uh uh western writing and south asian writing or even poetry you have uh, shad abdul hashmi we have examples like alamgir hashmi waqas khwaja uh aapki shad abdul hashmi hai matlab people who write in english and who have uh but i feel there is still so much room for uh for more work to be added to the genre of south asian diaspora poetry nahi nahi to bilkul theek baat hai pakistani anglophone writing se aap kitni yani jo pakistani angrezi mein likhte hain chahe wo diaspora mein ho ya wo home country mein ho usse aap kuch padhti hain usse kuch waqfiyat hai uski kuch koi critique aap offer karengi कुछ बताएंगी कि क्या पसंद है क्या ना पसंद है आई थिंक वाकफियत तो है आई रीड मैं कोशिश करती हूँ कि स्पेशली जो पोइट्स हैं शायर हैं जो लिख रहे हैं अंग्रेज़ी में लेकिन हैं वो साउथ एशियन औरिजन के तो उनके काम से थोड़ी वाकफियत रहे अभी मैंने जैसे आई मैंशन सेवरल पोइट्स एंड सेवरल राइटर्स हुज वर्क आई एम somewhat familiar with and i'm constantly learning novel fiction ke andar you know there's so many uh, writers from south of south asian uh, origin that are now writing in english and i try to be familiar with their work i think um the the thing i find is that obviously uh by its very nature diasporic writing tends to be uh, concerned with issues of identity because you are not in your land of origin you are in a different uh, cultural milieu you're in a different place even h- however much you've assimilated with that place you are still uh, the 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 sort of affinity and affiliation you have with your roots uh, and that identity is very much a hallmark of diasporic writing so um you categorize yourself as a diasporic writer i don't actually that's you don't. my that's, I, that's, that's the why point I i'm coming to that my agar aap ye kitab padhe it does is not really exploring not. issues of identity or of or of being an immigrant or having that immigrant sensibility it's not the book is as if i i am off the land and i still you know it's not bringing in that those kind of identity um uh, issues or topics that i i feel are more the hallmark of a of a diasporic writer so um my uh, i while i understand um, my familiarization with authors that are from the diaspora or are, are anglophone is that it is much more focused on exploring aspects of identity uh, uh vis-a-vis being a, an immigrant or being in a foreign place and being detached from your country of origin i said took you a while uh, to publish the first collection because you started writing at 6 uh, so you know it's 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 been some time you know <laughs> a, a few years at least so the, the the you know what made you you know come to this to making this decision that now it is time that you're going to be published Yeah. and how did you select because you've written much more mm-hmm. how did you select there, there are 52 poems in, yeah, in this collection poems. so how did you i mean what was the uh, you know the criterion for for making this selection and mm. what was the you know thought process behind that so when you start out at 6 you're not uh, your craft needs a lot of maturing and uh, you have a lot of growing up to do so uh, i actually started compiling the manuscript in 2012 right it has taken me a full decade to get it to this uh, level uh, to this place and uh, 
I think you in or मुझसे बेहतर आप जानते हैं कि अगर आपको 50 poems की collection बनानी है full length तो आपको probably 80 नवे poems लिखनी होंगी जिसमें से आप कल करके weed, winnow, add, subtract, you know, you try to create a narrative arc, you try to create uh, which poems are speaking to each other, which poems are, you know, uh, making sense for the manuscript, for the story you want this particular book to tell. And uh, in that, not every poem is going to be uh, relevant to the story you want to tell. Some of those might be more suited to another collection or might be more uh, suited. For this first collection, I wanted to make sure that the poems I selected were creating the kind of uh, the, the story I wanted to tell that uh, be as immersive as my first uh, book which is also going to be present in uh, Western literature for it to be as representative, as culturally specific as I could make it, for it to come from that uh, platform of talking about family, of talking about uh, celebrating roots, celebrating Indus Valley culture, celebrating uh, Pakistani culture, but uh, celebrating it but also not shying away from places of grief and tragedy. Yeah. Being able to acknowledge the hostility, the turbulence, as well as being able to uh, take pride in, 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 uh, in you know, your place of origin. And as my introduction to, uh, as my debut collection, because this is also my introduction in uh, the Western, uh, you know, milieu, I wanted to have this be my introduction. And so the poems I selected were very much speaking to that as well as um, just what I felt were uh, poems that best told that story. There's both brightness and gloom yes. in, uh, yeah, in this collection. So now we can move on to uh, request you to read some of the poems for us. Yeah. And then we can perhaps have a 10 minute question answer interactive okay. session afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Please. Have you made a selection? I already? have, but okay. you must tell me. Uh, Begin with Stone Soul Water, you know, which is the title. Uh, that book. is somewhere. In, oh, yeah. it opened And up then right I in. love the geese poem also. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My kids like that one too. Okay. Okay. So this is the title poem, Stone Soul Water. And uh, this was actually written for my father. My father is a geologist, and I think uh, over the years, all my, the most important life lessons have been uh, learned from him. And um, it's drawn uh, from the fact that ever since I was a child, him being a geologist, whenever he would go uh, for field work, he would bring me back all these stones. Sometimes it was fool's gold, sometimes it's rose quartz, sometimes it's a fossil embedded in a stone. Mm -hmm. And all of these were just such little treasures that I would collect. And each of them I felt had an important life lesson. And so this poem, uh, when I finally, um, this poem was also one of those few poems that every journal I sent out to accepted. Sometimes when you send out, send out a batch of poems to journals, when you send literary journals, so if you send a batch of five, they will accept one, three, accept one. This poem, when I sent a literary journal, every literary journal has accepted it. So I was like, so then I should make a title poem. So uh, this is Stone's Whole Water. I learned Dolomite before Doll gripping my father's fingers as we wade into the heart of rocks. An ocean beats in all of us, he says, dripping lithified shells from his pockets. He hands me a rose quartz and curls my fist around the universe within a petrified starfish. The truth of mountains is they will become pebbles on windowsills. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my grandmother's geese. Dadi ma 
inspects the undersides of our shoes if she imagines a footprint in the podina patch. Only her precious long beaked geese can uproot the paniri. That too is our fault. The vicious fowls arrow straighten their necks parallel to the ground and chase us off the lawn. My cousin's calves barely escape their snaps. Ruling the roost, they bar us from the clubhouse, the cricket pitch, and cackle at us from Dadi Ma's lap. Two policemen, the chaukidar and the gardener, comb the streets for three geese till nightfall. Guileless, we wonder who left the gate open. Dadi Ma will never know a sweeper's family ate roast today. <laughs> uh, this next poem is called Lore. At dusk, the women come to the courtyard between the huts and cast stories around the fire, feeding on the slow roast of their days. Time to forget the heavy sun they carried for hours, rattling in dry pitchers until they flushed it out at the nearest well, two villages away. Now, in the night, they pull thorns from their tread and tuck secrets down each other's breasts while the men sleep off moonshine and truck shifts. The crones pass on their lives to the tribe and teach gypsy girls how to curve flesh against dropping desert winds without mislaying themselves. Clan songs of dusty lands with vulture skies lift off the drum and swirl into constellations. My choice? The moon is a noon. And this noon is the Urdu alphabet, a letter, moon. Page nine. Oh, page nine. The moon is a noon. <coughs> The moon is a noon tonight, a thin curve with a star unsteady in the gravity of its embrace. Within the crescent of your arms, I rise to your stone lips. Suck in a lost breath. You have me, and I, you devil, have nothing but your sickled horn silhouette. Jharoka. Three evenings, you and I have emptied our shoes of desert sand and leaned against the Rajasthani balcony that hovers over dune valleys and camel trails, an Alif Lela Valela magic carpet. We need this pink city at seven stories between sun glare and darkness and time to unmask the quiet behind the distant chatter of nine to five days. Cushioned against the world, you follow a map of rivers and I bind verses into raft logs. The hookah gurgles in the silence, slides from one wall to the other, charcoal in our mouths. We will kiss the smoky taste away when the moon is no longer a fingernail edge jammed in a palm but a white hot scythe slivering our nakedness and the dry wind brings the rasps of gypsies to our bed. We lie face to face and stuff pillows with secrets. Slowly knit the night a net of fractured stars. Yeah. Nastaliq. Cat lazy afternoons, my let smudged fingers trace Nastaliq's script, a fusion of curling, arcing Persian and geometric Kufic Arabic. Straight backed Alif, big belly Che, the Qaf, vocalized deep in the uvula, harsh, unlike the softer Qaf. I give a turban to Te, a bindia to Zwad. Thinking of calligraphy in a sadiqain, fairs ghazal sung by Noor Jahan, 
rhyming riddles, and my grandfather reading Urdu poetry, quizzing me on poets' names. Absorbed in eternal lines of nastaliq, entranced like mystic Sufis, I decipher God and love and self until the sweaty, blunted pencil slants. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. This was actually written for my mother. Uh, so uh, this is drawn, uh, the instigating uh, sort of the inspiring moment was a story my mom told me. So uh, sirens. My mother vacationing from schools turned emergency centers, dead fainted when a cousin returned, flag and body bag delivered as sirens blared for the last time before peace was signed, the air strikes of 65, spiraling alizarin stars from smoked flesh skies. She would tiptoe behind windows painted black, dowsing table lanterns. Her uncle patrolled the streets, ensuring no errant pinpricks of light became bull's eyes for IAF gnats. Foghorn sirens announce Dadima, Quran on head and jewel box in armpit, huffing to sit under the oak table. Baba's Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar tranquilize nerves. Fifty years later, my mother, worrying her rosary, starts and pales as the siren heralding the Ramzan fast punctures skies, lightning from obsidian to cobalt. Ye aap the name of uh, that have uh, Urdu names poems. This one, Jiddo Johar, ye hai. एक एक और भी लेकिन एक वो मार्गला वाली भी है ना एक मार्गला हाँ और एक 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 कश्मीर पे जो है हाँ पहले ये जिद्दो जोहत पढ़ूँ विच है वो ओके इस पoइम का नाम है जिद्दो जोहत इसके इट्स अ सीरियस पoइम लेकिन द इंस्पायरिंग इंसिडेंट बिहाइंड इट इज एक्चुअल वाज एक्चुअली अ लिटल ह्यूमरस my uh, grandfather had had his cataract surgery. I must have been 10, 11 years old, and it was my responsibility to read him the Rose Nama Jung. So, all my brothers and cousins were cycling outside. It was my duty to read them to Jung Akbar. So, I tried to read them as soon as I read them to read them to read them to read them to so I used to read one column and read the other column and read the other column and read the other column. Now the fact is that it was not being made of the first column and the third column was in the whole column. So they took me to the other column. They said that you are not being made of the first column. You have some paragraphs that you have नहीं तुमने पढ़े हज़फ कर गई हो तो तो उस वक्त जो जिस बात पे जरा सी शायद उलझन मुझे होती थी मुझे बाद में पता चला कि उसका मुझे कितना ज़्यादा फायदा and how what a blessing it was कि मैं जो है उनको पढ़के अखबार सुनाती थी क्योंकि वो उसमें मेरा तलफ़ुस सही करते थे वो मेरी pronunciation सही करते जाते थे तो so now, this is an inspiring incident, but the poem is a little serious. Jiddo Johad. I read the Rosnama Jung to my grandfather's cataracts. Seer white in sunlight. Jiddo Johad, not Jaddo Jahed, he corrects. As my 11 years struggle with the careful Urdu of journalists, while beneath our feet are a secret basement press, hums words, dying on tongues, welted off backs, choked into cuffed hands. A bulb sparks over democratized print, ink smudged fingers screw clean from acetone soaked muslin. Man high piles of foolscap lean against foundations. I learn how to crease sentences into books that get transported in the hushed dark by top-covered wheelbarrows.
ایک پتنگ بازی اور کشمیر والی دس از کالڈ ڈریمرز آف دا ہلس ونس اگین کرفیوز شٹر دا ویلی آف مارخور اینڈ سیفرون دا ساور شارپنس آف اسنائپرز اینڈ اسٹون پیلٹرز ٹیئر گیسز اینڈ پیلٹ ڈاجرز تھکنس بارڈرز بارڈ بہائنڈ ونڈوز وی مورن ایز جنگل کروز اینڈ ٹرٹل ڈوز ٹیک فلائٹ فرام دا چنار ٹاپس آ واٹر فالس رن رسٹ فرام یسٹر ڈیز وینس سم ڈیز ان ریبیلین وی اسکیپ اپ ہل سائڈس اینڈ آن سمر ایوننگس ریسٹ آر شولڈرز اگینسٹ دا اسٹون ایجنگ آف ماؤنٹین روڈس سویٹ ڈرپس آف آر بیڈ نیکس ایز وی گیز upside down at home pyres far below. Nights smoked with ashed futures as we dream of galaxies far from armies, pretend boot prints are not appearing on our throats and our slopes are not choked with soldiers. In freedom, there had been no sting deeper than the slice of wind across our jugulars. Uh, Patang Bazi. I mean, there's a beautiful poem on Taxila Museum also, but we can't just... You can't buy anything from them, if you can read it all. So that's why it's necessary that... It's 52. Page 52. Patang Bazi and Hooded Falcon, but I like it very much. After that, we ask 10 minutes of questions. And then we'll come back to you and uh, um, listen to... In one or two minutes, we'll do more questions. This is Patang Bazi. My fighter Tukal tautens as the fan tail Tava shadows me across the sky. Between us, all the other kites, the paris and patangas, have spiraled to gutters, their shrapneled heads speared and paraded by looting street urchins, while bhang drunk jeers bay for more blood. The bird of prey missiles at me. I jitter in place and wait until the last five feet, then roll a kamikaze loop around its papery contrail. It flaps, a desperate rooster pulled in for slaughter. My fingers slicken as I reel, release, reel, till my enemy's thrusters rip from the strain and it nose dives like a spent paper airplane. Grounded, I unclench my palm from the sharded twine that has carved me a new lifeline. Patang Bazi pe itni achi nazm mera khayal hai kisi bhi zaban mein kam hi hogi. Not just in English. The hooded falcon. The hooded falcon. The old falconer places a palm under my elbow to buttress the heaviness of the Shaheen's tethered spirit wild for wind and sky. Wow. I am learning to let beauty and terror happen to me, to lean beyond my reach. Limits lie at the end of time. This world has no edges. The falconer releases the hood. My fear shut eyes open, meet an executioner's stare in the moment before the falcon lifts from me, winging towards prey. cleaving the sun with a hooked beak. It's such exquisite work, worse, what a pleasure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we can take a few questions or comments. We have another 10 minutes for that, 10 to 15 minutes. Gee, Aisha. If you can circulate, you'll have to wait for the microphone and then speak into the microphone. <coughs> okay. Uh, I, uh, Zakia, uh, I have a few things to say about uh, your poems, if uh, the audience would allow me to read it out from the paper, because I've scribbled some notes. Okay. So um, uh, the way, you know, I've, uh, uh, the impression that I get from the poems is that, though you've written it in English, but it appears that you're taking solace in the spirit and the critical intelligence of your own culture and tradition. which is amazing. And stylistically, you know, uh, the astounding part is that the poems are gorgeous in precision. So it's a masterwork of com compression. 
And um, there are times when some poems are difficult tangles, and you have to sort of read them uh, repeatedly, but it's, it doesn't feel exhausti exhaustive, or you know, it's never overstuffed. Uh, another point that uh, Harris made about diaspora literature um, was very important because I felt while reading uh, the poems that it didn't, you know, sort of, they weren't heavy or burdensome with those, you know, typical conventional diaspora themes. It's very fashionable to sort of bring in images of poverty or, you know, uh, sometimes distressed or deprived women, or ne neither do you mythologize a vohotena, motherhood ka or sacrifice ka element. Rather, you do bring in those feminine sari aap characters leke aati hai, and they are so refreshingly beautiful because all that is happening within the poems is that mothers and grandmothers are sort of, you know, they're weaving that pattern of culture. So it's beautiful, it's evocative, and Finally, jo, uh, sabse jo mujhe again relieving baat lagi wo ye hai ke she is not a culturally suppressed voice. Mm -hmm. uh, she does not shy away from passion. She probes the body. And then there's this visual beauty of uh, the alphabets and calligraphy, which is evoked. And lastly, the glossary is of great help. So, so as in to, if I could use the word, cater to a larger audience, nastalik ka jo matlab tha, wo mujhe bhi dekhna pada. To ye ek aisi hai jo glossary bhoat help karegi, ke bhai ek sort of multilingual audience ke liye. So terrific. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Aisha. Thank you. Thank you so much. But Aisha, you are very nice. Now you know what you mean. Yes. Okay, Mazhar. Mazhar Nisar is a wonderful poet among us. Thank you, Mazhar, for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor. Zakiya, excellent work and congratulations. This is since your maiden collection. What I wanted to ask you was, and it has been mentioned early and rightly so, that your work is rooted uh, in your own land, uh, from where you belong, South Asia. Uh, but uh, your immediate environments are totally missing uh, in your work. I mean, you're based in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, what I wanted to ask you is, that what is the audience that you have in mind when you write? Or you don't have any audience at all in mind uh, when you express yourself? Uh, just that urge of expressing yourself is so overwhelming uh, that uh, the thought of having a specific audience takes a back seat. So as somebody who's uh, a creative writer like yourself, uh, I, who do you write to? Who do I write to? I think primarily uh, you write because you have this untold story in you yeah. and you want to give it expression. So primarily it is not, uh, I'm not really catering to a Western audience or a South Asian audience. I am writing uh, my story. I'm telling my story. And I am hoping that it will resonate, uh, that story that I am telling will resonate with whoever uh, it finds, uh, it resonates with. Now that could be uh, South Asian, but I have had a lot of my American friends also find, um, uh, you know, interest and, uh, uh, saying that we're, we're very, uh, it's so immersive for us. Mm. And uh, we like that this really intimate, it doesn't put us at a distance from, the, uh, from uh, your South Asian origins. We find when we are reading that it is a much more immersive experience mm. for us. So I think uh, for me primarily, I am just telling my story mm. and then it may land where it may. Mm and it may find resonance where it may. So it is not to exclude or include that I'm saying, no, this poem I'm writing with a focus just for the Western audience, and that it just has, I am going to uh, maybe manipulate my, uh, my uh, sensibility, or I'm going to manipulate my linguistic uh, sensibility in order to make it more accessible to this audience or accessible to that audience. I think all my work is just an extension of my own sensibility, which I f hope will then find a home 
with uh, as many people from as many spaces, as many sensibilities as it may. So I, I think, th I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mazhar sahab, isko mujhe jo jab maine ye kitab padhi thi na, iska jo manuscript. So I think these images sari South Asian hai. Lekin jo emotions convey hote hain, wo universal hain. So it's like that, in my opinion, in art, when we read Latin American writing or African writing, it absolutely resonates, although the habit of the art is different. Yes, Amir Jafri. Let's talk a little bit about it. Let's start 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 a little bit about it. Linguistic purity is a very old debate. What is the time that we have not heard of it? We can probably do it. It's a very old debate. It's a very old debate. اور جیسے کلچرل کنسیٹ ہوتی ہے ایسی لینگویج کی کنسیٹ ہوتی ہے لیکن ہم دوسروں کو کہہ دیتے ہیں لیکن اپنی ان چیزوں کو نہیں وہ دیکھ پاتے کہ زبان مستقل بدل رہی ہے انگریزی کے لفظ آ رہے ہیں اس کے لفظ وہاں جا رہے ہیں مستقل تو لیکن اصلی چیز جو ہے شائری میں وہ تو شائری ہی ہوتی ہے وہ تو اس کی تہداری اگر اس کی خوبصورتی ہے تو وہ آلیٹوریشن وغیرہ سے ہے اور اگر اس کی سبسٹنس ہے تو وہ میٹافورک فلائٹ سے ہے کمپلیکسٹی کی وجہ سے تو جیسے سوکرٹیز کو بڑا پرابلم ہوا تھا جب انہوں نے کہا کہ تم جان تمہاری ہم بتا لیں تم وہاں چلے جاؤ تو کنسیٹ تھی اس کی اس نے کہا وہ تو زبان بھی ٹھیک نہیں بولتے میں ان کے ساتھ کیسے رہوں گا اسی طرح سے میر صاحب کا پرابلم رہا کہ میں بات نہیں کر رہا میری زبان خراب ہو رہی ہے but these are all conceits as far as I am concerned اصلی چیز ہے تہداری میر صاب کا ایک شیر کیونکہ ہم اور حادث دونوں بہت میری ہیں ہر بات میں وہ ان کو لے آتے ہیں تو یہ relevant ہے یہ بات کہ اصل میں فن جو ہے وہ اس بات میں میرا حال ہے نہیں ہے کہ آپ کی زبان میں کریں چیزیں change ہو رہی ہیں کہ اس فن میں کوئی بے تہ میر صاحب کہہ رہے ہیں اس فن میں کوئی بے تہ اس میں بے تہ بڑا کمال لفظ ہے کسی نے بعد میں اتنی سمپل لفظ ہے کہ بعد میں بھی کسی نے نہیں استعمال کیا دھائی سو سال میں لیکن اس میں ساری بات شاعری کی وہ کر گئے کہ اس فن میں شاعری اس فن میں کوئی بے تہ کیا ہو میرا معارض اول تو میں سند ہوں ہاں اس فن میں کوئی بے تہ کیا ہو میرا معارض اول تو میں سند ہوں پھر یہ میری زبان ہے پھر یہ میری زبان ہے تو اب اس میں وہ کنسیٹ آگئی ہے لیکن بدلتی رہی ہے فیض صاحب کی اقبال کی زبان تو میر صاحب سے چیز چینج ہوتی رہتی ہے نا بلکل اس کو ہم نے اس طرح سے ایسپ کر لیا تینکیو بے تہ ہے بے تہ ہے بے تہ نہ ہو چیز تہداری ہو کسی کو کچھ سمجھ میں آئے کسی کو کچھ سمجھ میں آئے انٹرپریکٹیو ہے پیچید کی ہو وہ تو ہر لفظ ہی ہے لیکن یہ کیوں وہ شاعری میں ایک اور لیپ ہو امیجنیشن کی جس سے خوف بھی ہو خوبصورتی بھی ہو تینک یو تینک یو سر I think the uh, thing about poetry is, uh, uh, to Mother Zab's point, uh, the, uh, the thing about poetry is that I feel it is to make uh, the universal unique and the unique universal. We all feel hate, we all feel love, we all feel grief, uh, we all celebrate. So uh, across the human condition, those are, uh, those are feelings that we all feel. Uh, the only thing becomes what uh, poetic device or what vehicle you're using to evoke those very universal. What uh, is universal, you can say through the uniqueness of your individual experience. And in uh, recounting that uniqueness, you inspire and evoke the universal. So I think that is the magic of poetry. Yeah, or good prose even. Or even good prose, yes. Yeah. پہلے تو میم بہت بہت آپ کو کنگریجلیشن دو مبارک ہو اور سیکنڈلی میرا قویشن ہے کہ میم آپ رائٹر ہیں ٹھیک ہے تو آپ کو آپ کیسے اپنے تھارٹس کو سیو کرتی ہیں کہ کوئی اور رائٹرز جو آپ نے پڑھے ہیں جس طرح آپ کہہ رہی ہیں جیپنیز پڑھ رہی ہوں ان کے انفلینس سے اور اپنا جو ایک تھارٹ ہے جس طرح آپ نے اس بک میں آپ نے بہت خوبصورتی سے اس کو بیان کیا ہے تو وہ آپ کس طرح اس کو سیو کرتی ہیں اس تھارٹس کو انفلینس ہونے سے یعنی انفلونسز سے بچتی کیسے ہیں اپنا سٹائل اور اپنی بات کہنے میں ٹھیک ہے جی یہ پیچھے دے دیجئے ندین کو I think جہاں تک انفلونسز انفلونسز سے بچنا I think is not the correct approach آپ انفلونسز کو ابزورب کرتے ہیں اور پھر اپنی یونیک آواز آپ کی یونیک آواز کا اُبھار ہوتا ہے 
तो अब जैसे जो है अगर मैं मुराकामी पढ़ रही हूँ या मैं शेर नोल्स पढ़ रही हूँ या मैं चार्ल्स सिमिक पढ़ रही हूँ या किसी का भी वो एक्सपोजर आपके लिए अच्छा होता है क्योंकि वो उससे आपकी एक्सप्रेशन में रिचनेस आती है उससे आपकी एक्सप्रेशन में डेप्थ आता है उन ये नहीं कि अब आप हु बहू उनको इमिटेट कर रहे हैं लेकिन हो सकता है कि वो कोई ऐसा आइडिया आप में स्पार्क कर दें जो आप अपने एक्सपीरियंस अपनी सोच के लेंस के थ्रू फिल्टर करके उसको नए अंदाज में या अपने एक्सपीरियंस से मुंसलिक करके उसको आगे उसको जो है अपनी पोइट्री के ज़रिए जो है बयान कर सकें तो आई डोंट थिंक कि इन्फ्लुंस से बचना कोई एक वो है आई थिंक ये है कि आप कितना ज़्यादा अपने आप को ओपन कर सकते हैं कि आप मेरा बस चले तो मैं तो अपने आप को इतना जहन को और अपनी एक्सपोजर मुझे हर राइटर का एक्सपोजर हो दुनिया का एक्सपोजर हो ताकि मैं उस सब को सब का निचोड़ अपनी एक्सपीरियंस के थ्रू उसको प्रोसेस करके अपनी यूनिक आवाज़ में उसको बयान कर सकूँ या अपनी यूनिक लेंस से आ, उसको फिल्टर कर सकूं। लेकिन व्हाट आर योर इन्फ्लुएंसेस? वी वी डिडेंट आस्क दैट व्हाट आर योर इन्फ्लुएंसेस? कौन से क्लासिक्स में क्योंकि क्लासिक्स की भी कुछ बात कुछ ना कुछ तो लोग करते हैं ना इंस्पायर आई थिंक अगर इन्फ्लुएंसेस की बात आए तो बिकॉज एक्सपोजर इज हैज बिन बोथ टू उर्दू एंड इंग्लिश पोइट्री सो इन स्कूल वी यू नो यू टिपिकली रीड द रोमांटिक पोइट्स आपके शैली हो गए आपके वर्ड्स वर्थ हो गए कोलरिज हो गया कीट्स हो गए एंड यू ग्रो अप रीडिंग दैट इट्स पार्ट ऑफ आर करिकुलम सो देर दैट एक्सपोजर दैट्स हैपनिंग दैन इंडिपेंडेंटली यू आर ट्राइंग इफ यू हैव एन इंटरेस्ट इन पोइट्री दैन इंडिपेंडेंटली यू ट्राइंग टू एक्सपोज योर सेल्फ एंड रीड वाइडली नॉट जस्ट वाइडली बट रीड डीपली सो देर इज देर इज दैट पार्ट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट इन्फ्लुंस ऑफ वेस्टर्न लिटरेचर and then you grow up reading the classics you grow up uh, uh we grew up reading a lot of enid blyton a lot of you know um, uh, british authors and then as we grew up a lot american authors walt whitman uh main sharon knowles ka bahut zikr kar rahi hu she's one of my favorite poets bahut wo uh, jo hai honest aur uh, bahut uh, jise kehte hain uh, bold unki poetry hai she takes risks on the page so then you start building your own sort of uh, uh, understanding of uh, a genre and uh, what uh, you want to expose yourself to in that genre on the urdu influence side i uh, grew up in a family where my grandfather uh, aam taam har mauke ki munasibat se unke paas farsi urdu ka sher hota tha so uh, you grow up in that environment uh, hearing that and then um i grew up in a family of uh, shia tradition so therefore i was very early on also exposed to a lot of uh, noha salam marsia and you grow up with that kind of encoded almost in your sensibility to aapko wo ek aapko ek wo jo hai soz kya hota hai aur isme um Uh, that kind of seeps into whether you're religious or irreligious is uh, not even the point but it becomes a part of your sensibility ke uh, uh, wo shayari salam soz uh, marsia ki to apni ek jo hai literature mein ek bahut aham urdu literature mein position jaise hai to uh, i think all those influences have uh, i've i've absorbed those and i am a creature of all those influences so we take the last question from nadeen well, i just wanted to say i'm so excited to be here and it's great to see two of my favorite poets on stage together and yeah. i wanted to build on mazhar sahab's question so it's a cheeky question okay. um as uh, and and actually it's for both of you you could answer it together if you wanted or individually as south asian writers uh specifically pakistani writers both of you are going to be you represent a generation of pakistani artists and creators and um i wonder if you have a wish 
for what the body of Pakistani literature should look like, you know, in the period that was your period. Um, so as someone who doesn't write, you know, when I read novels or other work by Pakistani artists, I'm critical, we're all critical. But ek aapki ek, ek hope hoti hai, not, I mean, I, it's almost like a nationalism, not a nationalism as much as a cultural sort of uh, identity. identity. So do you see yourself within a body of work? And how this builds on Mazhar Sahib's question is, you know, he said, who's your audience? And you've said that it's just, you know, hmm. It's not about the audience necessarily, but how do you see yourself within a cultural, sort of within this time period uh, that you will now forevermore represent? Do you have a wish for Pakistani literature? That's a very heavy question. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, no, you are the guest. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I understand correctly, what you're asking is that uh, where we see ourselves placed in generally in the milieu of uh, Pakistani authors, am, am I correct? Okay. Well, I think um, as one of the many voices, really, because there's not any one kind of, uh, we are not a monolith, right? They're uh, Pakistani artists, Pakistani writers, anywhere in the world, we are not a monolith, whether we are uh, here, in uh, based in our country of origin or where whether we are part of the diaspora uh, even in the diaspora even though we've talked about the tropes about identity and having that immigrant mentality which is a hallmark of diasporic writing and stuff even in that there is a whole spectrum and a range of uh, voices that look at it from different angles and look at it uh, from different lenses and uh, similarly, uh, writers who are in uh, Pakistan who are writing in English, they are not a monolith either. Everybody's not writing, um, I mean, they're different cultural sensibilities, uh, different uh, literary sensibilities. So I, if I had to place myself, I would just place myself as one of those very many voices. What I would like to see happen in Pakistani literature is for there to be maybe, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, I, I would also, the audience, please correct me if you think I'm, I'm not correct on this. I, I would like to see a lot more, um, a more concerted sort of literary, like I think this is a great space to encourage progressive voices and to encourage the exchange of ideas. And but if you give America, for example, there is one, Aapka har do saal poet laureate badalta hai, national poet laureate. Ek aapka national poet laureate hota hai, aur phir har state, state ka ek poet laureate hota hai. Jo, so this is showing that there is a certain attention being given and there is a certain no priority and there is a certain uh, importance being placed and understanding of that importance that no, Poetry is necessary for communities. Poetry is the place where the public and the private meet. Poetry is the place where voices are raised, where uh, disruptions are created, where uh, celebrations happen, where a critical eye and a celebratory eye both coexist. And to have for a society to have that understanding, mm. I would like to see that recognition where we have that uh, sort of um, that we where we are coming to adab where we are coming to literature with with that sense of prioritizing it i hope that answers your question and i've done it justice i will let haris bhai sort of no no move i on from there yeah there are and i and that's not to say that there's not a lot of good work that is happening i am always very encouraged when i am sitting with a uh, people who love literature and especially my Pakistani friends and when I'm sitting in literary circles here, I am always, uh, it is always a source of great encouragement for me personally and I'm always really appreciative of the, uh, the good work that is happening. But I'm just thinking in terms of maybe a little more prioritizing and making it more of the national conversation ah. around literature. Yeah. I think very quickly to, uh, and uh, you know, coming to think of it, uh, and Jafri Saab and Arif Azad Saab both are here 
to correct me if I'm wrong, and there are so many others also in the audience, कि एक जो कैनन बनता है ना फाइनली वो मुल्क का नहीं होता वो जबान का होता है सो बेसिकली इट एक्चुअली सीरियसली आई मीन इफ यू आर एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज राइटर और इफ यू आर अ मल्टी लैंग्वेज राइटर कुड बी बोथ इफ यू आर एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज राइटर देन फाइनली यू विल बी प्लेस्ड अमंग द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज राइटर्स फ्रॉम एनी वेयर लाइक वाइज इफ यू आर एन उर्दू लैंग्वेज राइटर then whether you are from india or pakistan or afghanistan or uae or the us you will actually be seen as an urdu language writer to ek to ye baat samajhna zaruri hai to it's not just pakistani adab lekin pakistani adab itself ek hai you know there is a of course we live in a country and we have a culture and you know it's a it's a very vibrant culture and we are mm-hmm. multilingual i think i would like to see pakistani literature representing uh, all our languages Mm. Uh, because for instance and to look at things critically uh, we are sitting in potohar but in black hole most of the programs that i have um, you know uh, attended or participated in uh, we, i i don't think varda is here or not or any other from the team we never had a potohari bath session here we never had a local poets coming together in islamabad which is a part of uh, you know margala soa valley tradition is an old you know civilization rather soa valley is one of the oldest civilizations that we know of in this part of the world and we never had that so one thing it is important that you know it's it is the, because english has an advantage there is a hierarchy of languages whether we like it or not and english has an advantage so if you are a second rate english writer of uh, fiction from pakistan you will be known and you will be recognized far more than a first rate saraiki writer mm. sitting in dg khan uh. or multan so i think that is something that we need to consciously uh, work on and pursue what is happening in pashto what is happening ghani khan nobody knows in punjab uh, ustad daman nobody knows in balochistan about so likewise you know there are so many languages that we speak and there are such great poets and writers mm. that we have produced we are a bit sort of thoda sa novel mein hum kamzor rahe hain apni sari zabanon mein lekin hamare yahan daastan hai ha daastane hain in sab zabanon mein so basically i would like to see a more inclusive representative pakistani mm. uh, uh, you know body of writing which is more and which or by the way aapki jo global jo aapka international landscape hai लिटरेचर का उसमें अगर आप अपनी जबानों के तर्जुमे ही करना शुरू कर दें तो आपके बहुत से जो हमारे साथ के लिखने वाले हैं मुझ समेत वो भूल जाएंगे लोग उन्हें जो अंग्रेजी में लिखते हैं तो ये आई थिंक इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू ये ये एक बात है जबान के हवाले से भी हमें देखना चाहिए या एक तो थैंक यू फॉर सेइंग पोएम नॉट पोम हाय हाय ये तो है ना नहीं मतलब अमेरिका से आ रही हैं तो इसमें उनको तमगा मिला है ये पोम पाकिस्तान में सब बच्चे पोम पोम करते हैं पोम तेल है जड़ाई चुप गया तो अच्छा दूसरा आई एम विजिटिंग फ्रॉम आउट ऑफ टाउन एंड आई केम हियर स्पेशली बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस लिटिल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑन द ब्लैक होल्स पेज व्हिच सेड दैट समथिंग अबाउट यू राइटिंग अबाउट योर इंडस वैली हेरिटेज ठीक है ना एंड दैट रियली स्ट्रक मी बिकॉज़ आई एम अज्यूमिंग यू आर फ्रॉम द जनरेशन दैट ग्रो अप इन द लेट 80s एंड अर्ली 90s लाइक मी राइट या सो उस टाइम पर देयर वाज दिस कॉन्शियस एफर्ट टू डिवोर्स आवरसेल्व्स फ्रॉम आवर साउथ एशियन इंडस वैली हेरिटेज एंड एम्ब्रेस यू नो वी पर जो अरेबिक और अब टर्किश वो राइट हम जबरदस्ती ढूंढ के ले आए राइट राइट अब तो बच्चों के नाम भी अरदवान होंगे बच्चों जैसे पहले हमारे होते थे कि जी अरबी में चाहे वो उसका मतलब कुछ भी ना हो हमने रख देना है राइट तो दे वो इन दैट जनरेशन एंड इन आवर पेरेंट्स जनरेशन एज़ वेल एक वो स्टेट लेवल पे एक नैरेटिव बिल्ड हुआ था ना कि नहीं वो इंडियन तो हम नहीं है ना इंडस वैली से हमारा क्या ताल्लुक है हम तो अरबी हैं और हां बिल्कुल बट यू टॉक अबाउट दैट सो आई एम वंडरिंग वाज इट अ कॉन्शियस अनलर्निंग एज़ इट वाज फॉर माय सेल्फ आई मीन आई स्पीक फ्रॉम माय एक्सपीरियंस या फिर बाहर जाके व्हेन यू शिफ्टेड लाइक अब्रॉड सो देयर वाज दिस आहा मोमेंट व्हेन यू रियलाइज्ड कि ओ अच्छा ये भी है बिकॉज़ दिस इज व्हाट पीपल क्लब यू टुगेदर विद इंडियंस एंड साउथ राइट पाकिस्तान में तो ऐसा नहीं राइट सो इट वाज जस्ट अ पॉइंट ऑफ पर्सनल इंटरेस्ट कि ये चीज आप में कब आई बिकॉज़ आई एम अज्यूमिंग ग्रोइंग अप इन पाकिस्तान तो ये नहीं थी एक्चुअली आई डिडंट अनलर्न इट आई हैव ऑलवेज बीन वेरी कॉन्शियस दैट आई मीन वी डिड ग्रो अप अंडर जियाज मार्शल लॉ एंड व्हेन करिकुलम्स वर बीइंग चेंज वर बीइंग चेंज्ड रिवाइज्ड एंड वी डिड ग्रो अप विद दैट नैरेटिव अ सर्टेन चेंज इन नैरेटिव हैपनिंग वेयर वी वर क्लीविंग मोर 
we were cleaving more to a sort of Arab identity and sort of moving away from the Indic Persian, uh, Indic, Indic. Indic uh, Persian Vedic roots jo hamare hain. So, uh, uh, but I don't think for me it was a, in, in a, any way a conscious kind of a, a decision ke nahi. Major, I have been very conscious that over time we have seen uh, the culture become a palimpsest of sorts. Palimpsest ka matlab ke aap uh, jaise write and there's a poem in here which yeah. is called Scripto Inferior. Scripto Inferior, wo bhi Scripto Inferior kya hota hai? Ke jab ek vellum hoti hai, vellum ke upar jo original script likhi hoti hai, jab aap uske upar koi aur script likhe hai, to wo jo upar likhi wali script hai, usko kehte hai Scripto Superior. Or jo niche faded jo script reh jati hai, usko kehte hai Scripto Inferior. So uh, that poem is exactly about this, about culture becoming a palimpsest, about aisa uh, nahi Now we cannot deny that uh, jo hai, cul culture mutates, right? Culture transforms, culture absorbs different influences. So that's not to say that, uh, to negate that, that what happens organically with culture. But one is that you a deliberate changing of character of culture. So I have, yes, uh, to your point, I have been very cognizant of, of it. And it is something that has pained me. It is something that, because I feel that the richness of a culture, uh, it has, I think representation should happen in totality. And I think identity, it informs our, our identity should be acknowledged in totality. So uh, it wasn't as much of an unlearning as much as it was a deep consciousness uh, that I kind of uh, have always carried with me and that I do address because it is something that is very much at the forefront of uh, my sensibility. Composite, hoti na, I didn't. Aja, so if we can finish the, e I mean, wrap up the evening by listening to Scripto Inferior. And if you want to read another poem, you know, a couple of poems, then we can. Okay. Yeah. That'll be a pleasure. Scriptio inferior. Hijazi Arabic lies in implacable oil black over the watery cursive that undulates like the Indus across the parchment. Mullahs scraped the vellum to make room for dictated script. But here and there, ancient characters call through the bars of alif la memes, even as dark acid chews at their lips. The palimpsest double speaks through war and peace. Centuries cannot unlayer it. अब उन्होंने इंडस की बात की है तो मैं टैक्सिला म्यूजियम पढ़ दूँ। पoइंट्स अब हमने सुनी नहीं मार्गला डॉन एंड द टैक्सिला म्यूजियम देखो क्या। सो फॉर यू। दिस इस कॉल्ड टैक्सिला म्यूजियम। लोटस पोजिशन्ड विथ स्टूपास एंड चिप्ड गंधारा पोट्री, डजन्स ऑफ बुद्धास इनलाइटन, टीचिंग पेशेंट्स Benign Siddharthas sit in Abhaya Mudra, rib jutting Gautamas, fast in Dhyana, enduring with slight smiles, third eye chiseled into foreheads. We bring all the lives behind us to all the lives behind them, stand reflected in the glassy amnion, like so many prop roots of the same bunyan. Outside, the world continues to break in whoops of hate. But here, in shatterproof silence, we piece stucco back to bone, hold on to stone. The idol lords of Dharma Rajika and Sirkap, eyes pressed shut, create monastic dreamscapes, while still others take the watch. Shelf small statues, pillar long faces, bless heritage organizations, giving them sanctuary. The Buddhas of Bamiyan are dust in the valley.
Such delightful and exquisite verse. Thank you, Thank you very much, Zakia Rubab Khwaja. And uh, congratulations again on the publication of Stone's Old Water. The book is available here for, on a discounted price. Anybody who's interested can get a copy and get it signed by the poet. Yeah. Thank you very May much. May I say a few words? Uh, 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 I would like to say thank you. Ah, please. So, okay. You so, can also thank first of all, thank you all of you who came and friends, familiar and new faces um, that I hope to get to know better during the course of this evening. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I would especially like to take this moment to thank uh, Finishing Line Press in the U.S. that uh, picked up my manuscript and accepted it for publication. I would like to thank the Black Hole for providing such a wonderful uh, venue and such a wonderful opportunity uh, for uh, friends to get together and uh, for people to come uh, from all over to listen to me. A special thank you to Haris Bhai for your continued and constant <laughs> encouragement. It is a privilege. And uh, it is my, it has been my absolute honor these past few decades to learn from you and to you. be a recipient of all this incredible wisdom that you uh, so generously share. I also want to take this moment to thank uh, Khayam Mushir. Uh, he is there in the audience, my good childhood friend and uh, the recipient of my uh, first ever uh, tries in verse. Uh, he's been my friend since kindergarten and I have bad verse inflict kiya over the years. And pehli poem jab likhti thi, I would just send it to him and without revision. So uh, I am uh, deeply uh, jo hai, uh, full of gratitude that I have a friend like him who has always encouraged, who himself has a very well-developed literary sens uh, sensibility. And... Uh, so, Jo accountancy ke niche accountancy dabhi bhi hai, that is true. Just go, palimpsest, <laughs> right. <laughs> well said, Amir sahab, Jafri sahab. And uh, so thank you very much, Khayam. I have, uh, you know, Amir Jafri sahab for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, friends, I see my friends in the back. I am so thankful for family that has always been so supportive. My parents who had gave me my first words and uh, who have always been so encouraging. And uh, once again, to all the friends, old and new, uh, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot.